Today, many catastrophic threats are facing our world. Think, for example, of global climate change. However, one threat that has been pushed into the background is that of nuclear weapons. If you think that the nuclear threat ended with the Cold War, you're wrong. I heard that nuclear weapons were a big concern in the 1980s with the Cold War, weapons stationed in Europe, and cruise missile tests in Canada. Earlier in the 1950s, children learned how to shelter under their school desks in case there was a nuclear war. My neighbor told me how she and her friends sent her children's baby teeth to be tested for radioactive material after these nuclear weapons tests. I used to think that this problem had gone away, but I found out that I was wrong. A nuclear weapon is an explosive device that produces extreme heat, shock waves, ionizing radiation, and radioactive fallout. The effects are terrible. Nuclear weapons were used twice, in August 1945 in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. More than 200,000 people died and thousands more suffered from appalling burns and injuries. Survivors, many of whom had lasting injuries and diseases, were called hibakusha. Nuclear weapons should never be used again. Never. And yet today there are 13,400 nuclear weapons in the world. The Bulletin of the Atom Atomic Scientists warns that a nuclear catastrophe could occur at any time. The US and Russia have some 1,800 nuclear weapons on alert, and these weapons can be used in less than 30 minutes. More than 96% of these weapons belong to the United States and Russia, but these are not the only countries. In January 2020, the Swedish Institute for Peace Research reported on the countries that have weapons and how many. The weapons have been involved in many accidents. They have dropped out of planes and nearly been accidentally set off. Planes carrying these weapons have also crashed. There have been false alarms that an enemy had launched a nuclear missile and near launches in response. Faulty computer systems can be a problem. So can human errors, failures to follow safety directions, and technical problems in launch systems and weapons themselves. The Union of Concerned Scientists has spoken out and provided this information about problems with American nuclear weapons. But it's not even known what sorts of things could happen in other countries. Situations there could be even worse. Furthermore, unstable political leaders could push the nuclear button in a fury or a tantrum, leading to intense fires, enduring smoke, catastrophic environmental destruction, and millions or even billions of deaths. The Federation of American Scientists reports that every nuclear weapons country is modernizing its nuclear force, while arms control agreements are under stress and competition in arm races is growing. At the same time, the roles envisaged for nuclear weapons are expanding. Currently, there is a relatively low interest among leaders in the challenges of nuclear disarmament. Meanwhile, activist groups and individuals mostly focus on environmental threats. They tend to ignore the terrible threats that nuclear weapons pose to the environment and even to continued human life on the planet. How could anyone defend this? Nuclear armed states defend their possession of nuclear weapons by insisting that they will never be used. Instead, they argue, these weapons will prevent their own use because its leaders would be afraid of being attacked in return. Here's the theory. If country number one knows that country number two has nuclear weapons, then number one would never attack number two. And for the same reason, number two would never attack number one. The argument here is that it would never make sense for any country to attack any nuclear armed country with nuclear weapons. No rational leader would do it. Oh, by the way, I don't know why people would be willing to assume that all political leaders are rational. Well, anyway, this is the theory of nuclear deterrence. It's sometimes called mutual assured destruction or MAD, MAD. According to this theory, Nuclear weapons prevent war, and they have worked to do that. Leaders and theorists who defend nuclear deterrence argue that deterrence worked to prevent a hot war between the United States and Russia during the Cold War of 1945 to 1989. They argue that nuclear deterrence is safe and secure and will remain that way indefinitely. But this effort to justify nuclear deterrence is open to many objections. First of all, it cannot be shown that nuclear deterrence worked. When something does not happen, it is very hard to show what, if anything, 
prevented it from happening. We don't know whether there was a serious risk of war in Europe between the United States and the Soviet Union, now Russia, between 1945 and 1989. Given that such a war did not happen, we don't know why. So we don't know that nuclear weapons worked to prevent such a war. And even if we assume that nuclear weapons did work, that wouldn't show they would work indefinitely with different countries in different circumstances. The risks of false alarms, fallible computers, unstable leaders, and devastating accidents remain very real. If as many as 100 nuclear weapons were detonated, there would be a severe climate effect. Nuclear explosions would deplete the ozone layer. Smoke from nuclear explosions would block out the sun, resulting in sub-freezing temperatures and a greatly shortened growing season, with deadly radiation penetrating the atmosphere. The result would be nuclear winter, which would severely reduce crops of corn, rice, wheat, and soybean. More than a billion people, perhaps even two billion, would die of starvation, according to Jan Helfer, who studied the problem for the International Physicians Group. You could call this self-assured destruction, or sad. Because of nuclear winter, a country launching a nuclear attack would destroy itself as well as its enemy. Given the horrifying killing and environmental damage that would result, even one detonation is too many. Both for the world's people and its environment, the problem of nuclear weapons is serious and appalling. The facts of the matter are that nuclear weapons could end civilization on Earth. In 1986, there were more than 69,000 nuclear weapons on Earth. Agreements and treaties between the United States and the Soviet Union, now Russia, got the number down to 13,400 today. That's still a large number. It's a terrible number, but it's much lower than before. Many countries gave up nuclear weapons or stopped their efforts to develop them. These countries are Belarus, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, South Africa, Libya, Iraq, Argentina, Brazil, South Korea, and Taiwan. Most importantly, throughout the nuclear age, there have been many civic groups devoted to nuclear disarmament. The International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons won the Nobel Prize in 2017 for its efforts to establish the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. This treaty prohibits the possession, use, development, and storage of nuclear weapons. Its preamble notes the catastrophic humanitarian consequence of nuclear war, saying that any use of nuclear weapons would be contrary to international law, the principles of humanity, and the dictates of public conscience. Setsuko Thurlow, a Hibakusha, who now lives in Canada, accepted the Nobel Peace Prize for ICANN. ICANN is one of many dedicated groups working for the cause of nuclear disarmament. In Canada, these groups include Project Plowshares, the Canadian Network to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, Pugwash, and the Rideau Institute. There are dozens more in the United States, the United Kingdom, and other countries. Dedicated members work hard to petition and lobby political leaders and educate the public through campaigns, conferences, workshops, writing, and social media. These groups need support, and they deserve it. Look them up and consider joining in.